one of the greatest ideas that we can, one of the greatest conclusions that we can come to is this, particularly when it's a your greatest struggle, is coming to the conclusion that I ain't got it. I don't got it. You see, <laughs> and I recognized this recently, you know, when we talk about this self-help world, right? Personal development outside of spiritual development, right? Well, I won't get too much into this, but spiritual development is personal development, okay? But this, 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 this self-help world, just listen to the term, self-help. Brothers, if I could help myself, I wouldn't need God. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony, just for, for bringing that power to prayer. Because prayer is our opportunity and our responsibility to connect and uh, talk directly to the Lord. So we're just so excited, again, to be able to be in your presence. You know, this morning as I was, um, as I woke up, I, I went into my garage and I encountered a frog. And guys, you know, that's like, whoa, there's a reptile in my, in my, my garage. But the Lord told me something very simple. He said, you have to have frog focus. I said, what are you talking about? What is frog focus? He said, frog focus is that you fully rely on God. And that's what we as men need to be able to do. When we rely on ourselves, we find that we're not able to, to do everything that, um, that we desire. And we're not able to, to open up that potential and make it reality. But when we fully rely on God with that frog focus, the frog looks like it has no value. It's ugly. It's, it's in a bad place. But he adapts to his environment and focuses and relies on God to supply those needs. When we do that, we're strengthened. This morning, we have a doctor in the house, a real MD, not some, uh, uh, you know, a real doctor. And he's board certified across several different disciplines. He's been the, um, the Mavericks. Uh, physician. This is a man that's accomplished. And his refocus, his, uh, his focus has been now to be able to empower and encourage men to become the best version of themselves. So we're blessed and fortunate for the last five years or so that he's been a regular recurring uh, speaker on our platform. Today he's going to talk about in this manhood mandates theme, he's going to talk about the keys to overcoming your greatest obstacle. I got pen, I got pencil, I'm getting ready to take copious notes. Please welcome Dr. Brad Billard. Dr. Brad, are you there, sir? You need to unmute. Unmute yourself. There you go. There we go. Brother Mac, what's going on, man? I appreciate the intro. Um, like we said before, man, I'm a I'm a monk's family, man. So you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a, I'm amongst my I'm amongst my bruhs, B R U H. You know what I'm saying? So uh so I, I appreciate you having me back. Um so as I was thinking about what I was gonna talk about, the Holy Spirit put on my heart to talk about this this key that we're gonna unpack in terms of being able to 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 overcome your greatest obstacle. And and it's always refreshing when the Holy Spirit confirms that you heard him correctly, because as you're talking, Dr. Mack, um, and you talk about this fraud focus, fully relying on God, I said, this is just, this is all a setup. Apparently he got the same message I got. So, so anytime you get this, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, these signals from God that basically says, yes, you heard from me right. And the message that you said in introducing me, I mean, just fits perfectly into what I'm going to talk about. So um, we're going to jump right into this thing. And and like Johnny Mac said, I, I you know, you, you can you can get a pen and pad, but I, I really want you to understand conceptually what I'm talking about today. Um, so. I, I, I want you to take notes, but I only want you to write the things that really hit that you understand, not just writing for the sake of writing, okay? Because when I came to understand what I'm going to talk about this morning from my own life and, and, and understand this has been within 
2024 that I really came to understand this concept, this key that allows us to overcome our greatest obstacles. It was an absolute game changer for my life. And I know the word game changer kind of gets thrown around a lot, but I mean, it, it is it is a, uh, it, it was transformation as a result of being able to understand this concept. So, you know, we, we talk about obstacles and I want every man on here to think about what is that greatest obstacle, whether it's an obstacle that you're currently dealing with or whether it's an obstacle that you were dealing with, but typically these obstacles, and if you've heard me speak before, these obstacles that seem insurmountable usually will exist in one of three different areas. Typically, it's either gonna be in our health, our wealth, or our relationships, okay? And so some sort of, of, of challenge something that seems like it is very difficult to to overcome is going to come in one of those three areas and this obstacle sometimes is allowed by god meaning you know i, <laughs> I was talking to my wife the other day about the book of job and listen the book of Job just messed me up. Am I the only one that the book of Job just messed? Oh my gosh, the book of Job just <laughs> messed me up. Uh, we could have a whole year study about the book of Job. But but when you look at the book of Job, um, you know, God allowed the obstacles to happen. You know, he said, Job is my dude. Like Job is blameless and, and a righteous man, but he allowed Satan to do what he did. And what's crazy is that Job got hit in all three areas at one time. I mean, day one, he lost family and he lost all his wealth. That was day one. Okay. Then it came that he, you know, you know, his, his health got challenged with, with all the sores and stuff like that. But I mean, this was obstacles that were allowed by God, but then you have obstacles that are more action induced by us, where we are contributing to the obstacle, that there is a behavior that we are either doing or not doing. And let's just be real, we're, we're, we're talking about our own sin or our own strongholds that is preventing us from overcoming a challenge either in our health, our wealth, or our relationships. These are, th th this is falling short. This is rebellion. This is behaviors um, and actions that we are contributing to our obstacle. And so when, when we look at that, the, <laughs> these, 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 these sinful uh, uh, behaviors, they end up preventing our progress or they end up pausing our promises, okay? Now, um, recently I was looking at the book of Joshua and again, the book of Joshua is just so, <laughs> it's so inspiring to see how someone who was as close to God as Joshua was, was able to, to have so much triumph. Um, but in the book of Joshua, God had, these promises that as they went into the promised land, that they would conquer all of these areas. And, <laughs> and one of the first uh, areas they were going to conquer was this place called AI. And it seemed like a real simple battle, right? They had spies go look out. They were like, look, we got this, like we're good. And um, they went out to this battle. They said, you know, we only need so many troops. And when they went out to this battle, uh, they were defeated. And the army comes back and, you know, Joshua is going to God, like, what is going on? I thought the promises that, that you had for us was actually, you know, like, like this was like, it was time. And God basically said, no, 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 bro. Listen, you got some sin in your camp. So you gotta you have some sin in your camp as you as you go into the book and you start to read the story 
there's a gentleman by the name of Aiken who uh, who was disobedient to God. And he said, it's not until you can deal with the behavior that's in your camp, can I take the pause off the promise? And so it wasn't until that happened that then they were able to conquer as they were supposed to do. And so no different than what we may see in community where things may be paused, the promises may be paused, where our progress may be prevented. It is the same within us. Sometimes it is these behaviors that we're either doing or not doing that is preventing our progress, right? It, 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 in our health, it's either something that we 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 are eating or something that we're not doing, not taking our medicine, or it's in our relationships, either we're doing something that is lustful or we're not loving our wife or or we're saving our money or we're spending our money on something we need to, that, that we don't need to. But, the, but the, the idea is that some of these obstacles, whether they are allowed by God or action induced by us become very difficult to overcome. And, and, and it is not uncommon that as we're going through this, and again, I want you to think about yours, you get this feeling of hopelessness. Like this, <laughs> this is never going to change. And so we, <laughs> for many of us, we feel like the problem in terms of the challenge to actually be able to overcome the obstacle lies in our lack of effort. So a lot of us will think, you know what? You know, I got this. I just need to work harder. Like if I just really put some focus effort, like I really just haven't put the effort that I need when it comes to my health. But if I really focus, and really put the effort that I know is necessary, I can do it like I got it, okay? And that sounds reasonable that, it, that you know what? If, if, I just, if I just put more concentrated effort and hard work, then yes, I will be able to overcome this issue. But how many of us have actually tried to work harder and you end up in the same spot. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the obstacle is not overcome even when you put in work and you end up getting this sense of hopelessness again, sometimes to the point that you don't even wanna try again. And sometimes that's what happens to some of us is that we get hit so hard in trying again that we don't wanna feel that hit again. So sometimes we just don't try. But we think that that's our problem, that our problem in terms of being able to over our inability to overcome it is because of a lack of effort. But what I would submit to you is that it's not a matter of a lack of effort. Our issue is a lack of dependence on the person whose effort is actually needed in order to overcome the situation. So... <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Our problem is really not, it does not lie in a lack of your own effort. It lies in the dependence on the one whose effort is required to overcome the obstacle that's in front of you. <laughs> Another way of saying it is that the thing that's preventing us from depending on the one whose effort is required is our inability to recognize our humanity and that we can only do so much. You see, the world would have us believe, and let me say, the world would have us believe that you got it. And listen, it's a great story. Hey, man, you got this thing, man. Like you, you, you alone, you got this thing. But the challenge in that is that if we got it, 
that leaves no room for God to work, for God to have it, <laughs> right? So, so our problem is not so much in uh, our effort. Our problem is the thought that for whatever reason, we think it only requires our effort and that, and, and that we actually do have it, but that it only requires more effort on our part. That's where our problem lies. And it is the lack of dependence on our God. One of the greatest ideas that we can, one of the greatest conclusions that we can come to is this, particularly when it's a your greatest struggle, is coming to the conclusion that I ain't got it. I don't got it. You see, <laughs> and I recognize this recently, you know, when we talk about this self-help world, right? Personal development outside of spiritual development, right? I, mean, I won't get too much into this, but spiritual development is personal development, okay? But this, 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 this self-help world, just listen to the term, self-help. Brothers, if I could help myself, I wouldn't need God. So this self-help world wants to tell you, hey man, you got it, you got it. If you just read more books, you take more courses, you keep working on just on you, you got it. When the reality is there are some things that is not built for you to have on your own. The only way to be able to overcome is to be able to rely on God. And so th this, is, this is the key that I need you to understand and come away with today is that the key to overcoming your greatest obstacle is dependence on God, not independence from God. Your greatest key to overcoming your greatest obstacle is dependence on God. When we go back and look at the story of Genesis and we look at the fall of man, all that happened, all that we're saying is, listen, I'm going to try what, what, what Adam and Eve said is, listen, I'm, I got this. They basically said, I got this. I'm going to be like God, separate from God. Matter of fact, I'm going to be my own God, separate from God. Does that sound familiar in today's culture? <laughs> hey, man, I got it. Like, I got it. One of the biggest conclusions I came to recently is, Brad, you got to admit when you ain't got it. Because it ain't until you realize that you need help, okay? And that, first of all, realizing that you hurt and that you can't get help until you admit that you hurt and that you hurt bad enough that you can't help yourself. That's it. See, when I look at my own clinic, <laughs> when I look at my clinic, the patients who do the best are the ones who recognize, hey, doc, my knee hurts. And I'm here because I can't do nothing about it. I'm depending on you in order for me to get better. Because guess what? I have come to the end of myself. I've tried icing this thing. I've tried doing ibuprofen. I've tried resting. And I have come to the end of myself. And guess what? Me as a doctor, I can't work until you get out the way. Now, what about our ultimate physician? It's like we it's like we walking around limping. God, like, you good? You need help? Like, no, nah, I'm good, man. I got it. I got it. It's like, all right. See, he can't help until we recognize that we hurt and that we hurt bad enough that we can't help ourselves. So for some of us, sometimes it it, it 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 don't hurt bad enough to say, "Hey, I'm I'm coming to the end of myself." And we see this concept of dependence on God being the thing that helps to overcome an obstacle. So many so many um, examples in the Bible. You look at you look at Jairus. Jairus's daughter died. He said he knew there's nothing else I can do here. I can't do anything, right? I can't do anything. I'm going to Jesus. Jesus, please. I can't do anything. He recognized a need for God, right? Jesus came, miracle, 
did his thing, woke up his daughter. The woman of the bluff for 12 years, 12 years, recognized I've come to the end of myself. There's nothing I can do about this situation. Led her to Jesus, right? Even the centurion, hey man, my servant at home, he is sick, he's ill. There's nothing I can do. I'm coming to you. And then an obstacle was overcome. But we got to start recognizing the difference between self-help and savior help. Brothers, let me just say something. You can't save yourself. You can't help yourself. I had a conversation. I was speaking at a, at a men's conference a few months ago. Um, and and, and it, it was really good. We were able to, to, we were just talking and unpacking some things. And as I, as I came off the stage, I was, I, I was talking to this brother. He was like, Hey man, I'm, I'm dealing with lust in my, you know, um, you know, my, my relationship with my wife, I'm starting to kind of step out. I'm not doing anything too bad, but I'm like, there's some things that's happening. And, and he was kind of telling me everything that was going on in his life, real sharp guy. And he was like, I'm just really struggling to overcome this. And I said, man, can I be real with you? He said, yeah. I said, uh, you, you can't do this. And I said, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not trying to, 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 to de-edify you. I'm not trying to do any of that. I said, but you, you, you ain't got this not by yourself. Now I said, that's only half the story, <laughs> but there is somebody who got this. There is somebody who can help you, but you first have to realize that you can't do this by yourself. And once you come to that conclusion that you, the sooner you can come to the end of yourself and say, I need to stop trying to do this on my own and depend on God and his people, the sooner you will experience transformation in this area in your life. See, there was a time in my life where my relationship with God was one where I felt like I had to please God instead of, you know, my relationship with him was one where I'm, 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 I'm praying to him, I'm doing these things to try to please God. But what I really recognize is that even in my walk with God, I can't do that alone, right? So I'm, I'm trying to do these things to be holy and righteous, but really what it is, is God, I need you to be holy and righteous. I can't do that alone with myself. I actually need you. So my relationship goes from one where I'm trying to please God to one where I need God. And we have to come to this place where we say, I need God. So there's a few things I want to, I want to show, I want, I want to share. So one of the reasons that this, that, that dependence on God is the key to overcoming our greatest obstacle. One is that we were designed for dependence, right? God gave us our identity. The first thing he gave us was our identity. He said, I, you know, he made us in the image and likeness of Christ. So how can we like be our identity if our identity is in the image and likeness of God? How can we be like God without God? That don't make sense. Our identity comes from him. I'll tell you a quick story. I went to this Halloween party. I was invited to a Halloween party years ago. And at this Halloween party, they said, listen, not only are we going to dress up, but you get the opportunity to like uh, act as whoever you dress up as. And uh, and we're going to uh, give a, an, a, 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 a prize to whoever does the best acting. Well, at the time, uh, and I won't say that at the time, but even now, one of my favorite movies is Training Day. Don't judge me. I know we on a, you know, this is a secular movie, very secular movie, but uh, <laughs> Training Day, Denzel is my dude. So I say, you know what? I'm going to dress up as, as Training Day and I'm going to do the monologue at the end where he's like, King Kong ain't got all this other stuff, right? Well, in order for me to, to act like Alonzo in the movie, I had to study Alonzo. I had to look at that movie. I had to study how he talked. I had to study his words. I had to study how he moved and, and how, he, how, he, how, he, how he did his thing. Well, long story short, I end up going to this thing. I end up winning the prize. But I couldn't be like Alonzo without knowing Alonzo in the movie. <laughs> so how can we be like God without God? We are literally dependent on God. Paul talks about that thorn in his side. In that thorn, he says, listen, I talked to God. He said, God said, my power is made perfect in your weakness. 
That means I can't experience God's greatness until I recognize my limit. I cannot experience God's perfect power until I recognize my imperfection. So two, two more points that I'm at. We can do more with God. There's scripture that says, with God, all things are possible. The key part of that is those first two words, with God. A lot of times we want to leave things, we don't leave that out. You know, all things are possible. No, with God, all things are possible. And so I, I, I look at my relationship with God like one is like a spotter, right? So when someone is spotting you, you develop faster, you get stronger faster. And that spotter is, is, is responsible for two things, either delivering you because the weight is too much or developing you through the weight. And so that's how God is. I, I, he develops me more or he delivers me from either way. I'm dependent on my spotter for my, for my strength. And last is God's glory means more than your greatness. This is why we want to depend on him because he will come through for his namesake. And we want that. You look at the story of Gideon. Gideon, again, obstacle, the Midianites are trying to take over. They got to go to war. He breaks down his army from like 30,000 to 300. This is the original 300. Forget Leonidas. This is the original 300. And at the end, yes, it's an obstacle, but who gets glory, right? God's glory is what is necessary. So here is what I urge everybody on here to understand is that it is our dependence on God that allows us to be able to experience transformation in that area that you may be struggling with, either in health, wealth, or relationship. Because many of these things in life are built and designed in order for God to come through so that we can come to know him better and the world can come to know him and receive and, and he receives glory as a result of our dependence in a posture. The, the, the Beatitudes, the first thing it says is, is blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Poor is posture, meaning God, I need you. And it is that posture that allows you to inherit, not earn, but inherit the kingdom of God. So let us have a posture of humility, recognize our humanity relative to God and that we need him so that we can need God and not just have a relationship where we're here to please God. Thank you, brothers. Dr. Brad, Dr. Brad, you are one bad brother. You know, I just, I'm watching the evolution and the, and the, and the growth that I've seen over the, the years in your, your delivery and presentation. This was a spot on masterclass of our need for to depend on and rely on on God. And it's funny that, you know, because I had no idea. I was just, why is he just impressing on me this whole frog focus? But um, what, uh, what hit me even more is that your message talked about the goat and it talked about the frog. And you, didn't even, you, you wasn't even looking at the goat, but from a, a sports mo motif, the greatest obstacle of all time, that's what we're facing, how to overcome that goat in our life, that, 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 uh, that frustrating, just relenting thing that's trying to prevent us from being, being able to move forward. You said there's something about pausing and preventing progress, that obstacle that pauses our progress, our potential, but prevents our progress. And when we look back over all the things that you shared with us this morning, it breaks down that we have to fully rely on God. That is the the underlying, the overlying, the underlying, the, the, the side theme. That is the theme. How much are we relying on God? You say, how bad are you hurting? Until you stop, until you can recognize and realize the, the level of your pain is that's when you'll decide or make the decision to, to move away from what's causing the pain and then start living the life that's going to please God. I mean, there's so much to unpack on here. The beauty of our uh, of this platform is that you can go back and replay this and listen to it again and again and again. You know, we have, you know, thousands of, um, I believe it's, it's definitely in the, in the high hundreds of, diff of videos available uh, on YouTube. And yours is a part of that. So this is going to go up today. So you can go back, guys that are, that are watching out there, you can go back and, uh, and look at this 
uh, online, this was a, mess, a message, spiritual health versus self-help. You talked about made that look almost selfish when you think about self-help, just improving yourself and not improving yourself spiritually so that you can understand and know why you need to rely on God. That it's, it's, it's a force multiplier. You can do what you can do. That's what he just dropped from my spirit. It's like a force multiplier. You can do all that you can do, but when you infuse and connect and, and energize with, with God, then you can, it's multiplied exponentially. You can do exploits. You can do awesome and amazing things. You, you know, recently I had the, the, um, the privilege of reading uh, the 18th Psalm. And I didn't realize just how many remarkable quotes, how many quotes in the atmosphere come from that 18th, I'm not Psalm, Proverbs. So Proverbs 18 is so powerful and it's telling us these are the things we need to do. And if we do that, that means we're fully relying on God. I appreciate you this morning, brother. You know, the the, uh, the enemy don't want some messages to come forth and he's struggling. I, you know, I can, you know, just contact and reaching out to you, just everything that was because you had a message, you had a real substantive message. I'm going to open up the floor um, because I know that some people probably uh, received something that they might want to respond, uh, share on, and then we're going to pray us out. So the floor is open if anyone has a comment or a question or just a testimony. You know, the auctioneer says what? Going once? Going twice? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Brad, you, when, you, when you deliver something so powerful like that, they don't even want to get on to try to follow that. There's nobody that wants to walk in John's shoes and after, you know, just, you know, bombshell after bombshell. It's like a war zone out of you, but you built, you blew us up to build us up. And we thank you for coming. You're, you're a treasure. You're an honor to be um, a part of our program. So with that, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for such a powerful and enlightening and opening word, a word that opens us up so that we can understand that when we fully rely on you, the door is open, that we're able to overcome those obstacles that are in our life. Some of them self-induced, some of them come created by outside forces, but obstacles nonetheless. So this morning, we ask that you would just give us a, the, give us a, in our spirit, give us a direction, give us some guidance that you would have us walk in the hind step behind that that animal that can that can that can walk on the mountain crags and not fall off. The obstacles that are before us, Father, this morning we ask that you would give us the strength, the power, the courage, and the confidence to mitigate and overcome them. And Father, I pray that every brother on the line, every brother listening, everybody, male or female, that is receiving this word, that they would grow from it and that they would know that they need to fully rely on God. In Jesus' name, amen.